Hi again, everyone. Ben Hanneman here with this week's midweek teaching. Boy, these weeks seem to fly, don't they? Especially when it gets darker early. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Anyway, I was out doing some uh, yard work just now, raking up the billions of leaves that I have. <laughs> so I thought I'd come in and, uh, and uh, see about getting some midweek teaching a uh, lesson out to you. Uh, if you like these midweek teaching lessons, go ahead and share it with, with somebody if you don't mind. I know uh, we are not like huge Bible scholars, or maybe Pastor Jeff is, but uh, I don't consider myself a huge Bible scholar. I just love the Lord, and I know Pastor Jeff does too, and the others who uh, participate and take part in these, uh, in leading these midweek teachings, Pastor Chris, and I know Liz, and, and Bobby Davis. Congratulations, Bobby, on your election, by the way. Um, anyway, we, we just love the Lord, and we just want to get out... Um, just want to get out the word as as often as possible. And it's nice to be on a rotation with them. I feel blessed to be included in that number. So anyway, uh, if, you, if you like it, if it's a blessing, go ahead and share it with somebody if you don't mind. And, um, and you'll, be, you'll be blessed for it too. Right now, we're going to jump into 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, that's the rotation that I get to handle today. I'm not going to be very long. I think the shorter the better. Uh, the more meat we can get into, the shortest amount of time would be uh, would be good for all, don't you think? So, uh, so we're going to start with chapter four of Second Corinthians, beginning in verse one. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but sometimes my Bible study will consist of one of one word, literally one word. Um, I know we try to get in as much as Bible reading as we can during the day, but sometimes I'll give you a little secret. One word speaks to me, and that's what happened when I was studying this uh, this chapter, First Corinthians chapter four. If you're just just joining us, the word, the first word in chapter four of Second Corinthians is the word therefore. Now, that means that we've caught Paul in a in mid sentence or mid not mid sentence but mid idea. And the word therefore just just spoke to me. And so I looked it up. And the word therefore means for that reason. At least that's one of the definitions. The word therefore means for that reason or consequently or what's the other one here? Um, that's just a, a used in a sentence. It says he was injured and therefore or for that reason or consequently was unable to play. So the word therefore, I'm an English major, so I like these one word, one, one word lessons. So the word therefore implies that there's a, a sequence of things that happened before this particular chapter. Now remember that all the chapters and verse separations were put in much, much later than when these verses were originally written. So the word therefore takes us back to chapter 3. The last chapter, the last verse in chapter 3 says, and we, this is out of the NIV study Bible, and we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. And that glory comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So coming off that verse, Paul is saying, because of that, because we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, and because we are being transformed into his likeness, and because it is with everlasting or ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, because of all that, and also because of what happened earlier in chapter 3, because of all that, and since through God's mercy we have, this, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. You see how that all fits together? Again, sometimes when we jump in midstream, it's, it's tough unless we train ourselves to go back and look at what we remember as the context clues. Remember that? You have to look at Scripture in context because 
without context, text just becomes pretext, and we don't ever want that to happen. So there's a series of events or a series of things that Paul had said in chapter 3 about the veil that because of all that, or as a result, or for that reason, therefore, then he goes on to say what is going to what happens because of that and he says therefore since through god's mercy we have this ministry or paul has this ministry of writing letters to different churches we do not lose heart for paul because of the persecution he was going through could probably find it really easy to lose heart he was getting attacked at every at every side because of his preaching and because of his former life that people couldn't get over. They couldn't get over the fact that he was a persecutor of Christians. Other people were just attacking him because of his faith and just because he was, right? He was a preacher of the good news. So Paul had every reason to lose heart. But he declares here, he says, we have, we have this ministry. And since it came about through God's mercy, and since it came about because of everything that happened in chapter 3, therefore, we can't lose heart, Paul is saying here. In my mind, they had to do things to make sure they didn't lose heart. And how do we not lose heart even in our own lives? We go off and we pray and we spend time with the Lord. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And I'm going to save that bit of, of, of scripture for another time. But even Jesus went and waited upon his father. He waited for the Lord's, the Lord God, his father, to give him his next instructions, right? His next, uh, his next mission, so to speak. And even in our, just like Paul did, he says, his, he says here, we do not lose heart. He and all of his workers in the in the, his labors for the gospel would take time to go and spend time with the lord and be energized and be renewed in their strength to do what they have to do so these thousands of years later that does nothing but speak to us about how we cannot lose heart and we can keep from losing heart in our own struggles right because we got a lot of them. We don't have to look very far to see that there are struggles out there and that we can lose heart. But Paul is encouraging us here in verse 1 to not lose heart. Do not be weary in well-doing, as other parts of Scripture say. Do not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. Just to go back into chapter 3, there's a, a an awesome section of chapter 3 that talks about the veil, right? It talks about the veil in the temple. In the Old Testament times, there was a veil that separated the outer court of the temple with the inner holy of holies. And there was only one person who could go in there one time a year, and that was the high priest. Not just anyone could go walk into a church like we, can, well, like we do now, but they had to, the chief, the high priest, had to cleanse himself in a ceremonial cleansing. And then he had to put on special clothing. And then he even had to tie a rope around his ankle so that if there was anything impure about him and he, he passed away in the presence of the Lord, then the next person, the next priest in line would, would be able to, to pull him out. But the idea is that there was a veil separating the Holy of Holies with the outer courts where the common people were or the parishioners, if we could call them, call them that. So the, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil, the separation between the Holy of Holies and the common man was torn. Now this, that, that veil was pretty thick and it was made probably several inches thick, if I can remember my Bible study, my Bible history, it was several inches thick. And when it was torn, it was torn from the top down, 
meaning that no man could have done that. No man was strong enough to rip the the thick fabric of that veil, and it was torn from the top down, which means that you know man could not possibly have logically or logistically pulled that off. So the Paul Paul talks a lot about the veil in chapter three, and I'm sure Pastor Jeff mentioned that uh, in his teaching. So I don't want to cover much more of that, but the idea is that the the separation, the the boundary between God and man has been torn, has been set, has been eternally taken away by what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that is tremendous, right? We can take heart in that. It was never God's intention for us to be separated from him forever. And for, and for that reason, he removed any and all obstacles between us and him. In fact, the only obstacles that are there between us and God are those that we put, on, put in the way ourselves through sin and whatnot. But Jesus came so that that veil and that separation and that boundary between us and God would be torn down forever. Paul transitions from the veil into the fact that he God has given him this ministry to, to all the churches and that he is not going to lose heart. And he's going to take steps to so that he so that he and the people he's working with don't lose heart. Right? And so to me, it, that speaks of preparing ourselves so that we don't lose heart, putting it into our li- putting into our lives a, a regular routine so that we don't ever lose heart. I know we feel like it. I know there's times we, we, we wake up and we have a week of Mondays, <laughs> right? But we can, we can know that because the separation between us and God has been taken away forever through his son, Jesus Christ, that we can be renewed in our spirit and we we do not need to lose heart we do not need to give in to the enemy's schemes to wear us down and to break us down we can lose we we can we can lose the the fatigue and know that the joy of the lord is our strength and we don't have to lose heart so hopefully that blessed you no it wasn't very long a lot of words maybe but hope that blessed you that look we don't have to lose heart just like paul says therefore or because because of that, because the veil is gone, because we have a relationship with God, uh, and because we can go to the Father without that veil there, that we can keep from losing heart and we can be renewed in our spirit. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon. God bless.